Liar of the Lion by the Night Ninja 2. Chapter 23. Painting Pictures. The days dragged on, and Mirabelle watched as Alma tried hard to reconcile with the family, Bruno especially. Louisa slowly chipping through Mirabelle's walls with her hugs, but Mirabelle could also see how her sister struggled to be useful. She still tied her worth to what she could do for others. Mirabelle was currently painting the walls of the new nursery. She had put the base white down before looking at the four walls. The window framed the rising sun perfectly to allow her to settle on an ocean theme for that wall. She thought back to her beloved ship that she had named the Sunset Streaker. She began to paint it from memory. Flashback. Your Majesty, the wind is on our side. We should arrive at the Lone Islands in a week's time, Aslan willing. Very good, Captain. You may return to your post, said Mirabelle. She gazed out at the endless sea. The salty air filling her nose, the naiads swimming alongside them with the dolphins. Mirabelle came back to the present, shaping the golden lion's head at the front of the ship. She stepped back to look at her masterpiece. On the wall where she had once painted Aslan, she decided that the party the night after the battle at Aslan's Howe would be perfect even if she could only remember half of it. She painted Antonio's laughing figure on the shoulders of a minyad. She painted herself rosy cheeks with a golden goblet of wine sloshing in her hand, her flower crown lopsided on her head as she slapped her knees to the music. She painted Mariano looking totally confused and flustered, surrounded by minyads while still in his armour. The trees danced with Lucy, Peter talking to Caspian, Susan dancing with Lucy and the trees, Edmund keeping Mirabelle from falling over, but he was also grinning like an idiot from too much wine. She painted Aslan off to the side, watching the party fondly. Mirabelle smiled at her work. There was a knock on the door. Come in, said Mirabelle. Papa entered. Mirabelle, you have been in here all day. And what have you been doing? asked Peppa before she looked at the painting of the massive ship at sea right in front of her. She turned her head and saw the other painting in front of Mirabelle. Mirabelle? What is that? asked Peppa, looking at the party scene. When Narnians win an important battle, the party afterwards is magnificent, said Mirabelle. Is that Antonio on the shoulders of that barely clothed woman? asked Peppa, horrified. Oh, the Minyads thought he was the most precious thing ever, and he had such a good time, said Mirabelle. Mirabelle, are you a drunk in this picture? asked Papa. Papa, technically I'm thirty, said Mirabelle. Why does Mariano look so flustered? asked Papa. Because the Minyads kept making comments about his sword, giggled Mirabelle. Oh, my! blushed Peppa, understanding the double meaning. Yes, it was quite amusing, and suddenly took his mind off the events that day, said Mirabelle. Please tell me you didn't let Antonio have wine, asked Peppa. Of course not. He had grape juice. Best grape juice in the world, but no alcohol whatsoever, said Mirabelle. Peppa gave a sigh of relief. What about the other two was? she asked. The ruins of the stone table, and a portrait of me and my siblings. I'll put Louisa on there too, said Mirabelle. Are they in the party scene? I'm interested in seeing these people you call family look like, said Papa. Mirabelle smiled and nodded. The girl with the blonde hair dancing with the trees is Lucy. She's the youngest after me. Next to me is Edmund. He's the third youngest. The teenage girl with dark hair dancing next to Lucy is Susan. The blonde teenager talking to the dark-haired teenager is Peter. He's the eldest and the High King. The boy he is talking to is Caspian X, the newly crowned King of Narnia, said Mirabelle. Does him taking the throne affect your rule? asked Papa. I'm a princess, not a queen. And no, once a king, queen or princess of Narnia, always a king, queen or princess. I actually might have more authority since I am the High Princess, but Caspian is a good man, so I doubt I'll ever have to use my authority with him," said Mirabelle. May I watch you paint? asked Peppa. Mirabelle smiled and nodded before starting on the painting of the stone table. Mira, 
What is the significance of this table? It looks ancient, but is obviously an important thing if you are painting it, said Papa. The stone table is as old as Narnia itself. Where traitors of Narnia were killed upon it by the White Witch. But when a willing victim who committed no treachery is killed in a traitor's stead, then even death itself will start turning backwards. My brother Edmund, when he first came to Narnia, committed treason against it after falling under the spell of the White Witch. Aslan died in Edmund's place, and the table cracked. Aslan lived once more, said Mirabel. It sounds like the cross, said Papa. Mirabel nodded. Very similar. I overheard him tell Susan and Peter that in our worlds he has another name, and they must learn to know him by it, and that I have known him since the day I met him, said Mirabel. And you aren't even fazed by this knowledge, asked Papa. Papa, I grew up in Narnia. I've risen on Aslan's back. I was so little the first time I met him that it didn't even occur to me the true magnitude of being in his presence. He was kind, and said he was friends with Abuelo, said Mirabel. Papa had to sit down at this revelation. Abuelo let my wardrobe open into Narnia. He wanted me to have a little miracle of my own, because no one, not even me, saw what I was, said Mirabel. There will be a party after the house is finished. I assume you are going to indulge in a fair bit of wine at the party? Asked Peppa, trying to steer the conversation back to something easier. Maybe a glass or two. I don't want to destroy the house after it just got rebuilt. I'm sillier than Isa when I'm drunk, said Mirabel. Isa has never gotten drunk, said Peppa, a bit confused. I got her drunk the night before the house collapsed. She needed to learn how to have fun. Look at me, for example. Narnia's perfect princess, but also the only one who can outdrink the god of wine. It's about balance, and Isa had strayed too far deep into the uptight side of things. Casita helped me teach the perfect madrigal how to be as wild as the jungle. Of course, we stayed in her room, said Mirabel. That must be why your mama was trying to figure out why she was missing three bottles of wine, said Papa. Casita had a mischievous side said Mirabel. So tell me, why do you think you'd destroy the house if you got drunk at the upcoming party? Said, asked Papa, eager to tell someone of her own drunken exploits when she was younger. Probably because I get super destructive when I'm drunk. The unicorn incident, the pillar, the table, the suit of armour, the painting, the cupboard, the pantry, the wine cellar. Oh, how could I forget the time my handmaidens joined me in my drunken exploits? And we gallivanted through the halls in Peter's robes and reenacted the Battle of Beruna in the armory. Imagine ten drunk female centaurs and the princess, all rosy cheeked and in robes way too big, all not meant for them at all, and whacking real swords together. My sister Lucy was not amused to have to treat those injuries. Peter was just trying not to laugh at the sight of his little sister in his blue and gold robes and his crown that he had been searching for for hours. My handmaidens were rather sheepish about all of it, and Susan reprimanded me for involving those who could not speak against my orders in my exploits. No matter how crazy the party got, said Mirabella. Well, that puts dancing in my nightclothes in the rain in front of the village bachelors to shame. Though I do suppose it is wise for you to remain sober at the parties here in Canto. I think I scared off most of my suitors the night of my 16th birthday. I don't remember any of it except a trail of destruction and broken stone walls leading to a garden where I woke up in a rose bush, said Mirafal. Peppa winced. Isa is lucky she fell asleep on her floor and not in the cacti garden, Mirabel said, also wincing at the memory of the rose bush. Heaven forbid you have convinced Louisa to try wine, chuckled Peppa. Mirabel laughed. She had never touched a drop for fear of what could happen. Though in a safe area, perhaps we can see if she is as silly as Isa and I, laughed Mirabel. Knowing her, she is far more likely to start crying at a tiny rock 
and somehow managed to cuddle a python. Said Peppa. True, she'd be an emotional drunk. Said Mirabelle. Like her father, you and Isa get your silliness from your mother. Do not let Ulietta have too much wine or caffeine. It does not end well for most, said Peppa with a slight shiver. Makes me wonder what will happen if we get your mother drunk off our ass, smirked Mirabelle. No! For heaven's sake, and the sake of all our sanities, do not go that far, shuddered Peppa. I wasn't. I was just thinking out loud. But the idea of a disaster is rather appealing, grinned Mirabelle. Ev, you've been drinking today? asked Peppa. Nope, coffee with a lot of chocolate that I took from one Joe again, said Mirabelle. Oh, sweet mercy on our souls, the candle is caffeinated, joked Peppa. Mirabelle fell over laughing, accidentally getting paint on herself in the process. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you've enjoyed that. I like the bond Pepper and Amira have in this. It's really nice. And admittedly, this was a bit of a dialogue-heavy one, but not in the conversational way. I like how they're swapping stories about it. And can I just say, Pepper dancing in the rain in her night clothes while drunk? Why can I picture that in my head so clearly and really wish I couldn't? <laughs> anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care, okay? Love you guys. Bye!